Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. Well, good morning out there. Hello, self podcast listeners. This is your host, Patricia Leonard. And as always, we want to help you get those dreams off your someday shelf and turn your can'ts into cans and your dreams into plans. And the way we do that is always very much the same, but with a lot of different stories. I always like to invite guests on here and you can hear their story and how they move through through their career, their life, and tried it all and finally succeeded. Isn't that interesting? Because a lot of times we think, oh, I couldn't do that. Well, this is, I've got a guest today that's going to show you can do it if you decide you want to. Ava Lee Stewart is here with me today. Say hi, Ava Lee. Hi, everybody. Yes. And I'm going to give you just a little overview about Ava Lee, and then I'll let her take it to take us on a journey of her life and some of the things that maybe caused her to move her career or her life in a different direction, because I call those hello self moments. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter if it's a flash or a, something that you just, somebody said, hey, let's try it, and you felt brave. That's what we're about here. So let me give you just a little overview of Ava Lee. She is a filmmaker, an author. She's written over 50 films. I know, four feature films. I'm impressed, and I haven't even listened to everything. Actually, I met. Uh, Ava Lee through Women in Film and Television. And she was recently at one of my events, and I just fell in love with who she is as a human being before I even knew that she did all these things. So get to know people. She she simply is, she's even gotten into uh, real estate. So we don't have to stick in one place. And this woman is going to take you on a journey today in her own life, just sharing some of the things that have taken her in different directions. It will encourage you. So Ava Lee, I'm going to let you take it from here, whatever you want to say, where you were born or however, (laughs) where you had your first insights about, I wanted to do this. Because sometimes... It begins when we're six years old. <laughs> I, th- I feel like I was on a creative path from a young age. I loved doing things that were any kind of craft or any kind of like problem that required that kind of skill. And I think that people, when they think about creativity, it's in every job, every line of life in a way. It's It becomes, you choose a lane in a sense of the path that you feel like you like the most or you're the best at or someone maybe influences you to go a certain direction but what's interesting about creativity is it's in every part so it's hard to put it in a lane so I think that's why I do so many different things because I'm just interested in the world and I want to create things that's really the kind of the sum of me but I uh, you know what Ava let me Ava Lee let me jump in here just a second because you just yeah watch out for me I you triggered something because we are as a society we have cars we have buildings we have film houses we have everything because of creativity it's a magic word it is it is magic because you transform something from one state to another it is like magic in a way and it's not a negative magic it's a positive magic that helps society (laughs) yes because we need invention we need people to look at something i've seen it so many times where someone looks at an existing system and they say oh i can make it better and that's because of creativity and and also logical thinking a lot of other things skill but it's it really 
I think for people, especially like me, it's hard to pick a lane and you just have to keep going mm -hmm. and just keep working hard and not quit the direction you're going. Because I see so many people that are like on the tip, they're 90% of yeah. the talent. And like, they just need that extra 10% of like that people maybe don't understand some people that aren't creative on level the successful level of creativity is that you pay attention to every detail you know why you did it why it's there where it's going and then you let it go and you keep going but it's hard to get to that place where you realize mm -hmm. that every single part of that project has to be exactly the way you envisioned it or it's going to be not it's not going to resonate with people on the same level Somebody was saying, and I can't remember who it was, but the other day somebody was saying that everything begins in the imagination. And then we take it to some product or we don't. So sometimes we'll just toss those things that we're imagining out and say, oh, no, that would never work. But if we take it to the next level, like you're saying, creativity, then something can happen. Yeah. Creating well, I just did a movie about Howard Finster, Reverend Howard Finster. He was a yes. folk artist. He was a, a Baptist preacher before he was a folk artist. He retired and he looked at the congregation after the last sermon he gave. And he said, how'd you like the sermon? And he, and the lady said, I, I don't remember what you preached about. And that really vexed him because his whole life was spent for the message. And yes. he realized on the day he was retiring that he didn't get his messages out. So he prayed and he went into his garden in his backyard and he asked for God's help to get the messages out. And God told him to paint sacred art. And he took Bible verses, put it on recycled objects, and he ended up creating over 48,000 pieces of art from his retirement age until he passed away. And I was really inspired by his story because he was so visionary in the sense of just trying to just do his part to put good things in the world. But he often said, do what you can with what you had. And so he would even take a pantyhose container or a light bulb or a candy wrapper and turn it into mosaics and turn it into other things. He didn't see trash like people see trash now. He saw it as an opportunity. And I really enjoyed making the film because I think it's important for everyone to realize that you, if you wanted to do that thing, the time is now and start somewhere, even if it's not that you finish it in one day, just start and have a plan to keep working until you finish. It's just as simple as that. It doesn't have to be, I have to write it in three months or I have to finish this painting in one day, just start. Yeah, I think you just said an, another fabulous word is that is we talk a lot, but we don't always start uh, something. We'll talk about it and talk about it. And I remember I was coaching somebody a couple of months ago, and I asked, she, she was wanting to move in a different career direction. And so I said, when are you going to make this shift? She was working in corporate America here in Tennessee or Nashville. And so I said, when are you going to make this shift? Her response to me, when you're going to leave the company, her response to me was, I'd like to. And I stopped her instantly. And I said, I didn't ask you what you'd like to do. I ask you, when are you going to leave? She immediately responded, two weeks. And guess what? A job opportunity opened up in two weeks out of the clear blue with someone that she hadn't seen since college. Uh, your point about the power just, of manifestation, oh, it really is. It's like start. when you decide, yes. mentally decide, the energy changes around you and around that focus in a way that like you start to see the, the path might open up for you. Yes. It's real. <laughs> and I love that you do that for people. It's such a beautiful gift that you have that you can help. And I was in a similar situation, actually, when I worked at CNN, there were a number of mergers and I was feeling like I had three jobs and I was overwhelmed and I didn't like working that much and not accomplishing creatively what I felt like was good. 
And I remember my one of my really good friends from college, her name is Carrie. She said we had lunch one day and she was like, if you're not happy, just quit. And I was thinking like, is it really that simple? <laughs> and it is. Go forward in the place where you're supposed to be because oftentimes when you feel like that, it's a message. Yes. In my mind. I think, yeah, sure, you're right. It's one of those hello self moments mm -hmm. to say, am I going to am, or am I not going to? Yeah. And it was, and that was the best thing I did because I ended up going to London to film school and then I moved to Los Angeles and I would not have done that had I stayed there. I was right. meant to go work. And thanks to all the people in this world that support other people and give them encouragement and perspective because it, Ultimately, it's like your perspective can be clouded by the fact that it's your perspective. And when sometimes you work with people like you that are so amazing, that can help you to like see that one thing you can't see, your, I call them blind spots. I don't know what other people call them, but it's like this thing that's holding you back that you don't see. And once you change your mind about it or you see something differently, it can change your whole life. Absolutely. And Ava Lee, some, you, thank you for those compliments about being a good coach. However, I'd like <laughs> to say to our audience that why do we know how to do some of these things? It's simply because we have lived it. And you're saying right. things that you have actually lived. And so it's not that we're smarter. It's just that sometimes we're just willing I don't know. We just get that nudge that says, okay, you're going to do it now or not. Like you said, is it that easy? It, it is that easy in a sense, but you have to trust your intuition. And yes. I think that's something you cultivate over a lifetime because when I was younger, I would feel something and I'd say, no, I'll just do it. And then later I was like, I should have trusted my gut. Mm -hmm. And now after all those di different times, I say, when I get that feeling, I know what I feel like I don't want to do or I do want to do and I'm very careful about my decisions to move forward because it is every choice takes you on a new path in a way and especially with the film industry or writing it's like you have an entire world of ideas or options and you have to choose the way that you feel like is the best for you mm -hmm. in that sense yes but I love I love the idea of I try in a really deep way to live in a present moment that I really look at where I am now and where I want to be. And I have short-term plans and long-term plans. And I think that helps me to organize it, to be able to just figure out like the steps you have to take to actually accomplish the goal. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you, you said plans, because I think I re uh, and I know you came from corporate America too, but also uh, I remember we lived on plans. At least that's what we thought. So every year we'd put all these plans together and then business happened. So, mm -hmm. so what are plans for in your mind? What are plans for when somebody says, I'm going to do this and then they lay out the journey? What value do those add and what are they for? In my mind, my godmother, Lee McComas, she often made lists every day of things she wanted to do. And if it wasn't done on that day, she'd flip over the page and make a new list. And I met her at a young age. And so I often made lists of things from just picking up the dry cleaning to like writing a chapter of my book. So I feel like a plan is different for everyone. But for me personally, I feel like it's saying, okay, I want to write this novel. I have to get the first draft. So I'm going to, I I personally make fake deadlines sometimes for myself where I mm -hmm. say, I've got to send it to so-and-so in six weeks. And then it helps me to like stay on the path of writing often so that, because mm -hmm. I, for me personally, when I write, I have to keep going until I get the draft of the story or I lose the story because it's like, you're pulling something out of thin air. And if you don't keep through to the whole train of thought with all the moving parts, then you go back and read it and you say, oh, I've got to start over. So that, I think it's really important especially with creative arts like that. You just have a discipline to keep going mm -hmm. and everyone's plan is going to be different. And when I worked at Turner Broadcasting in Atlanta, I remember I worked so much that I didn't have as much time for a kind of creative 
things on the side, but I would take classes in photography at Emory University. They had like a after hours kind of night class. And then I would take Spanish and I would take different things to just keep learning and keep growing. It ended up because I took Spanish on the side (laughs) when I was working that I got the opportunity to do a commercial in Madrid, Spain. And it's so random, but it's like, because you put in the work doing what you love or you're interested in, it creates opportunities that you would never expect. Right. And I think I hear what you're saying about planning, because it may not always be exactly as we laid it out. But if we keep moving instead of setting still, I think that we op- we just like you say, we open up opportunities for ourselves. Yeah. yeah. And and I think that's where the intuition comes in, too, because it's mm-hmm. like you recognize the opportunities. And I was speaking with another director that actually lives in Nashville that I recently met and his name's Noah. uh, We were talking about the fact that when you meet certain people or you're in certain situations and it's so, there's no way to predict that would have happened. That's a message in a way that maybe this is like a special moment that you should embrace and see where it goes. See, See, just be very thoughtful about your experiences. I think it's funny that you're talking about this now because I believe, (laughs) and we all have our crazy beliefs, but I believe that our universal system is changing. Mm -hmm. And more and more people are, if you want to say it, waking up. I'm not sure quotes, woke is the right word, but waking up or starting to pay attention, just like you're saying to those moments, the intuition, because we do get nudges in life and we let distractions, oh, well, I got to do this or I got to do that. So every, I, I remember, I think it was Keith Urban here in town wrote a song called Noises. And <laughs> it's all these noises that are going on, all these distractions that are going on that sometimes keep us from our own journey and our own understanding of what we're seeing that is possible. Do do you ever think like that, that? Oh, of course. Procrastination is one of my biggest challenges, (laughs) but I do know from experience that in that sense, if you don't fill your time with your focus, then your focus will be stolen from you in a way Mm -hmm. by other things. So it's almost like a game of if you look at coins on the table that you're taking the coins you want and you're putting them towards what you want. And then the, so that you don't start doing things that are off, off focus for what your goal is. Cause I've been there where I did a favor for someone and edited a screenplay. And then all of a sudden we're doing all these other things. And then they didn't even have the rights to the screenplay. It was a total waste of time, yeah. <laughs> but I, but they had told me they did. And I was not told the full truth of the project, but at the same time, I feel like I would have been better served using my energy to fix my work. Yeah. And it's easy to take off focus something from you to help other people. And you really, and that's a creative pitfall, I think is either procrastination or being afraid of your own success. Mm-hmm. I see that a lot. I do, ah. I do a film festival and I meet a lot of young creative people and it's a film and music festival, the Southeastern International Film and Music Festival. And we do pop-ups in Nashville all the time, but a lot of times there'll be an artist or a filmmaker or a musician and they're so good, but it's like, they just need to get over what it is that holds them back, why they don't want to put their work out or that feeling of, of judgment that people fear And I dealt with that when I was younger, that I remember going to a meeting with the producer and I did all these graphic designs and the producer was really hard on me. And it was a New York producer and I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, and I have a Southern mother and that those kinds of harsh interactions Uh I wasn't familiar with. And so I remember learning a lot working that way because you just can't care what anyone thinks about your design, do your best with your creative works and just keep moving forward. If you fail, it's just a sign that you maybe learned how to fix something 
to make it successful the next time. Ah, very good point that there are no such things of real failure take out of that what the learning was. That's a great point for our audience too. Is well, to success. Success is the same thing. It's not one thing. It's like a roller coaster ride of ups and downs. And in the end, you look back and you say, I kept my, I kept the course that I wanted to be on and I got there, but it's gonna, you're gonna have failures. You're gonna have challenges. And that's the hardest part is picking up your bootstraps and keep going. <laughs> yeah, I think maybe we should re rename that word failures as uh, successes, because in some way, <laughs> I like it. It's the same thing. Well, words are powerful and the meaning of word is powerful. And I do feel like success is not just the good part. It's all of it together. (laughs) So it's all wrapped up together in one bag to me. Yeah. And I, I think that, oh, wow, what a powerful point for a lot of people, because I think that if it doesn't go the way we planned, that's me. If it doesn't go the way we saw it or the way we planned, then we think it was a failure. And yet, if we could look at that and find what are some of the great things that came out of this? Well, I did it or whatever. (laughs) We can always find something that is a success. Very good point. And with film, there's tons of times that I worked on films that for whatever reason, the editing didn't go well and it didn't get distribution and, or it didn't get as widely successful as people hoped, but I met some of my favorite people on the film set, but it's like, it's just take the good where it is. There's, even if that film didn't go where I thought it would, and I put in a lot of work to make it look good because I was the production designer in this instance I'm thinking of, but it's the people I met, I'm still friends with them and they're amazing. And that was maybe why I was there in the first place. And I didn't know. No, I think you're absolutely right. We think that this is the reason we showed up at something. And yet what happens is, wow, I met somebody just like you. I met you and I didn't really know what all you did. I am so impressed with all that you have done. Have you taken some of your books to make films out of them? I've never adapted my own book to direct. I actually adapted a screenplay for my first book, Everything in Between. It was like a coming of age novel I wrote in college, Yeah, but I, I didn't direct it. I would be glad for someone else maybe to take over because for me personally and it depends on the person and the writer but for things that are based at all in my own experiences I feel like I wouldn't want to direct that project because someone Ah. else could bring more to it that they might see things that I don't see in it Ah, because it's hard hard when you write too I remember when I was writing one of my book memoirs of oblivion I had left out a part that I'd wrote in my outline, I did, I thought about it. And it was this one part that kind of like made a big difference in the whole of the work. And my editor was like, what about this? And I was like, I didn't write that down. (laughs) I had forgotten to write this one piece that brought it all home. And it's like, you need people to tell you, or Mm -hmm. you need to think about things differently. And it's easy as a writer, when you're making up a whole story from nothing, to have to go back and figure out the little pieces that maybe you need to fill in to make it work. Have you, a- in your career at all, have you ever had any thoughts that I wish I would have gone this direction or I wish I would have gone that direction? Maybe in your life or your career or a project that you took on, you did mention that one project, but any... um things well that's a really good question Patricia I was thinking about it I feel like the most challenging things taught me a lot so I couldn't say I'd want to go through it again but I wouldn't take it back Mm -hmm. I but in terms of like paths I just I've always trusted in a higher power Mm -hmm. and I don't think I would take it back because I learned Mm -hmm. what I needed to learn and I moved forward wiser and able to make better choices and better decisions so Mm -hmm. and we all have a journey it's it's really how we respond to it in a way I think it 
boils down to the simplicity of choice. Do you have a healthful meal? Do you take care of yourself? Do you spend the time to work on loving yourself or what you need to do to, to be able to do your best? Or a lot of people choose just to stay in an airplane mode, I'll call it, and just like coast at 30,000 and not really like dip up or down Mm -hmm. and they just and it's like that's not life to me that's the fun of life is being in it and just doing what you can to just go I'd like to say that you've heard to my audience you've heard a lot of what Ava Lee has done however there is one piece that we haven't talked about yet and I want we're going to just touch on this because I want you to see that you can do all the things you want to do. So Ava, tell us a little, Ava Lee, tell us a little bit about uh, how you got into real estate and how that might even fit with what you're doing. What are some of the commonalities in that? I grew up around real estate because my dad was a commercial real estate developer. And when I was 15, I worked at his office and I just, he did a lot of office spaces where he would finish the space for the tenants. And so I was working there, like helping with that kind of stuff. And so that's really how I started my entire life was around real estate and doing those types of things. So when I went to college, I was an interior designer and I, it was all based on my experiences. And then I, that's how I got into production design and I did sets for CNN and other people. And it was, and it was like always, I always enjoyed creating spaces for people that made their life better. Mm-hmm. And I always, I enjoyed also creating kind of uh finding now as a real estate agent, I love finding people a house that's their home that I helped them to find the place that they feel safe and call home. And it's a real process. It's a journey with people to find a home. It's one of the biggest life decisions you make. It's one of the biggest financial decisions you make. And it's important that they have someone with them that can guide them on and manage any kind of insecurities or expectations about a space so that they can feel good about what they're doing. Cause it's a big decision. In a way, I'm listening to you, and in a way, you're almost creating a film, and they're the star of it. (laughs) Maybe (laughs) so. Maybe it's just me, but I do feel No, but I love it. I feel like that. It's like they really, it's such a big thing, and I do want to do some real estate developing and create maybe some different healing centers that creative people can go and work together and maybe help each other to move forward. And I think Tennessee is a great place for that because it's just so beautiful. And there's so many great spaces here that, you know, people can enjoy and thrive. I ultimately, I guess I just try to help people to live a better life. And I try to do things that make life better. Mm -hmm. Well, I love that idea about a healing center where people can go and find out who they really are. It's like this hello self idea that I have. Who are you? Who are you? Oh, I love that idea. Well, and I've noticed because I do have a lot of creative friends because I'm a creative person that when we all get together, you take from everyone different things and it helps you to be better. And being around people that are doing similar things in a positive way it helps you to not be as fearful about moving forward. Yes. If you, what is it that they talk about? Find your tribe of people. Yeah. That, yeah. That we're always trying to, it may not always be in a certain career, but finding people that help us find who we are. And I notice with creative people, especially in the film industry and the music industry, it's a journey you take and you get better. And when you get to a certain level, you recognize that level in another person. And you, when you see someone working on it, you recognize what they need to overcome. And then when you get to a certain point, it's like you just have mastered a lot of different areas and it's because of the journey. It takes a long time. Yes. Good at it. And I loved what you did at the high heels cabaret for that reason 
because you gave people an opportunity to perform and become better and you cannot be better without practicing. Yes. And it's very different to practice in your living room versus a live audience. It's very difficult to perform and people maybe don't realize not everybody can do it because it's hard. <laughs> yes, because it's all these emotions come over you about, oh, did I say it right? Oh, I forgot the word. And mm -hmm. it, it, it even talented people sometimes that have done their gigs for a while get up there and do those kind of things. Yes, uh, Ava Lee's talking about High Heels Cabaret. It's a, a show, a variety show that uh, we were both at this weekend that I created and produced, and it gives individuals an opportunity to feel free to try what they may have, just what Ava's, Ava Lee's been talking about in her own uh, life and in those that she's come. And I love that healing center because it is what we did was really, I didn't think about it at the time, but it was really a healing center type environment where people could just try something that they wanted to try. Just like one of the ladies had written spoken word kind of stories. And she had never shared it from, from the time she was a little girl. And uh, she wanted to get it out there. And then the great thing that what Ava Lee is doing is giving people with this healing center and with the work she does, because she is a supportive kind of person, is giving them an opportunity to do what she's done if they want to. So, yeah, I think, that, I think that's really essential for creative people because you've heard people say, oh, he's so green. She's so green. They're so green. It's because it takes a lot to be a performer. You have to practice and it's about timing and about managing stress. And the, in the moment, mm -hmm. you might not be able to talk. You might start sweating profusely. Your body has a response to it and you have mm -hmm. to learn how to manage it. And these are an opportunities that every person who wants to go down that path of performing needs to have those opportunities to be able to be around people that are seasoned performers, that they can figure out what they're doing and learn their insights, and then they can become better. I know that I, the comedian Kathleen Madigan has a podcast and she lives here in Nashville part-time, I think. Yes. She was, she was saying Lewis Black, her good friend, always told her to speak slowly because she talked too fast in her routine and she practiced a long time to be as good as she is. And I love that she shared that because it's the littlest thing that can really, it's that perfecting the smallest point of your creativity that takes you to this next level because you put in the time and the effort to make it the way that you really thought about every part of it and you were really decided that's what you wanted and you put it out and then you move on, you keep going. Yes. The creativity, which you mentioned initially is one thing, but then the delivery is another that really can help you be successful too, right? Is that right? right. And look, Louis Black is a seasoned comedian. He gave her that advice and helped her. She shared it on her podcast. It helped everyone. Yes. That listens. I would have never known that had she not shared it. And it's about the things that you've created, the High Heels Cabaret, My Film Festival. These things we create help people to be able to come together kinds of insights. And yes. that could be the make or break moment for someone or if someone's struggling with mental health issues, just being around other people that are doing the same thing you're doing, it can help you to like come out of it. Do you and have a film fest festival coming up now? We don't have a current date. Planned. What are some of your but next plans that we could gaming. share? What are some of your next event? Well, Do you I was have working a film on a document. coming out. Well, the Fenster film is um, just released in April, and it is on twenty different cable networks and iTunes and Amazon, and so anyone could go find it. It's called Fenster. Fenster. It's F-I-N-S-T-R Finster. Yes. And it's about the Reverend Howard Finster. And yeah. then I have a number of channels with different short films and my mm -hmm. handles at Ava Lee Film. 
so anyone can find me online on really anything. I was lucky enough to get that URL for a lot of different sites. Yes, <laughs> so, good. So uh, you can find, you know, some of my short films if you're interested in that or music videos or my books are on Amazon and I have books of poetry and uh, different novels. And I don't have any ev events I'm hosting coming up, but I will keep you posted. <laughs> yes. And the things that Ava Lee just shared, we will have, when we post this podcast, we will have some of those links and some of the book titles that are on Amazon for you so that you can get to know a little bit more about her and what she's doing and what she's done. Because I think that's once she said she went to speak or take Spanish lessons. When we <laughs> can learn from somebody else, my, oh, my true story, my true belief is that uh, in everybody's story, there are many gifts and lots of glory. So find the gifts that work for you in Ava Lee's story and dig in a little, and we'll have some of those sites on there. Ava Lee, before we go, what are any suggestions or techniques? I, you've given a lot of ideas, but any <laughs> specific, no, and I like that. That's what we want. Any specific thing that you would like to say to our audience about turning their cans into cans or getting their dreams off that someday shelf or just anything that might help them take the next step? I would say that you need to know what you believe and why you believe it. Uh -huh. And if it takes peeling back all the layers of your life to sit with yourself and to think, okay, so-and-so told me this, religion told me that, people told me this, and just sit with yourself and say, this is what I think. And I know why I think that. I think it just revolutionizes your whole way of living and it changes your ability to create on a level because when you know that you can create any character you can think of things outside of yourself and I feel like that's when people truly resonate with you when you are looking at other people looking at the true picture of things yeah very good that might not make sense to everyone but it will if you do it <laughs> yes that's a very good point because sometimes we hear things and what was that what did that mean but if we follow through and i think okay. that's a message that you've delivered so well look at your creativity everybody has it and she uh, ava lee just told you that from the very beginning and i wanted to say one other thing yes We've really focused on the positive things in my creativity, my career, but at the same time, there are vices and different things that creative people have that they have to get over and challenges they have that take them away. So I feel like it's a good thing to, to know, for people to know it's a struggle sometimes and it's okay. Yeah, a very good point, because sometimes we have creativity and we don't know what to do with it, and it takes us in the wrong direction. Exactly. Yeah, that's a very good point, because so many creative people I know have struggled in life, yes. and but found themselves. And I, I love what you've said about creating in Nashville or in the Tennessee area, something where individuals can go and find other people so that they don't have to take a path that maybe doesn't work for them or doesn't serve their highest and best good. So keep following Ava Lee Stewart. And um, w between the two of us, we're going to bring more than you want to <laughs> hear. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> And you may say, oh, my goodness, get these two women off the streets because they're driving us crazy. <laughs> but if you've got a dream or a goal, you could come to either one of us. And we're not saying good we can. crazy, Patricia. It's what the is good, it? It's the good crazy. Yeah. OK. The good. <laughs> yeah. You see how we compliment ourselves. <laughs> but um, you can count on us to either help you or give you someone to say, go try this, go talk to this, because that's our whole mission in life besides doing our own work, but helping you find your own 
path and your own creativity, like uh, Ava Lee was saying. So, okay, any last words? Here we're going gone. <laughs> I feel like to just try to create something today and just keep doing it as much as you can and see where it takes you. Yes, I love that. Last piece <laughs> of advice, create something today. And you might even let Ava Lee and I know what you created after that this would be great. That yeah. would be great. Even if it's just a beautiful dinner, it's about your intention. Yes. You something. It doesn't matter what it is. Because it's time that we look at ourselves and compliment ourselves for something. I love that. So let us know and you can get a hold of us because we'll have our information. Is there a, do you have a, a specific email or website or anything? Oh, if you, you don't, we can. At Ava Lee Film on Twitter, on Facebook and Instagram and you LinkedIn. So you can find me anywhere. Just so, my name. So look, you can reach out any place. So tell us, and you know mine. So tell us what you did today that was creative. We want to know. Who I knows love it? that. It a call made, to action I, on Hello Self. Yes. I know. Yes, <laughs> and it was your suggestion. We make a good team. <laughs> I like it. Well, it's we'll such have a you all, <laughs> Yeah, we'll have everybody creating. We'll have Nashville popping. With all kinds of things. Yes. I love it. Thank you so much. You are a delight. And I am so honored, Ava Lee Stewart, to have you here today on my podcast. It's an honor. And I just. honor is all mine. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Well, as always, when I sign off again, this is Hello Self Podcast. And I'm your host, Patricia Leonard. And you remember what I always say at the end of every podcast, keep dreaming. Thank you for joining Hello Self today and may it offer insights and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe. And remember this, keep dreaming. Keep dreaming.